So a lot of you guys have been asking me to review some budget laptops here on the Mr. Phone channel. And coincidentally, Asus just launched the new lineup of VivoBook laptops here in India. One of those laptops is the VivoBook X403, which I have right here. And to be honest, if you're looking for an Ultrabook in the near about 50,000 price tag, this thing just might be it. Hey guys, this is Varun from Mr. Phone, and this is my review of the Asus VivoBook X403. But before we get started with the review, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to stay tuned for all our upcoming videos. I've got some great laptop videos lined up, so make sure you do that. Now then, let's get started. Let's talk about the design first, shall we? Despite its quite competitive price tag, the X403 comes with an all-aluminum chassis. Not only does it look premium, but it is also quite durable thanks to the military-grade certification. Now, if you want to know what that means, I've done a thorough investigation of military-grade standards on another laptop, the link to which will be in a card over here. The best part is that ASUS manages to offer all this while keeping the weight limited to just 1.3 kgs, which is absolutely bonkers. Now, it's not like the design is perfect. For starters, the edge underneath the laptop is quite sharp and you could actually hurt yourself with it. Also, the laptop fails the one hand opening test, so there is that. That said, those are just minor nitpicks that most people, including me, would be willing to trade off for. Overall, the VivoBook X403 looks like the ZenBook lineup brought down for the affordable segment, which makes things almost perfect. Over the years, connectivity options in Ultrabooks have dropped a lot. In order to reduce those size, people have been dropping out ports and everything. Thankfully, that is not the case with the ASUS VivoBook X403. On the left side, you get the DC charging port, full-size HDMI port, a USB Type-A port and a USB Type-C port, followed by the LED indicators. Over to the right side, you get another USB Type-A port, full-sized SD card reader and a 3.5mm headphone jack. Honestly, I was quite taken aback by the fact that the VivoBook comes with a full SD card support. I mean, that is something that is missing from a lot of premium ultrabooks as well. Now, I know a lot of you guys must be complaining about the lack of a Thunderbolt 3 port or USB Type-C charging, but considering the overall package at this price tag, I'm not really one for complaining. With bezel-less displays now becoming a trend, Ultrabooks now feature a bigger display in a very small chassis. The X403 is no different. Making use of what the company calls its Nano Edge design, the laptop manages to feature a 14-inch display inside the body of a traditional 13-inch device. Not only that, the display boasts of a 87% screen-to-body ratio, which is phenomenal in this price tag. The panel itself is quite good as well. It is a full HD IPS display with a 178-degree viewing angle. The color accuracy isn't top-notch, but it gets most of the work done. I do wish that the display on the X403 was a bit brighter, which would have allowed me to use it outdoors as well. I do recall there was this time when I was using the laptop at a coffee shop and I actually had to relocate in order to avoid direct sunlight. That said, the display itself is quite good as it is and I would still rate it a solid 8 out of 10, which is actually saying something, considering the price tag. Now, if I have to say something about the X403's keyboard, I'd have to say love at first touch. I'm not even kidding, the keyboard on this laptop is absolutely amazing. For someone who's a fan of mashing their keys, the 1.4mm key travel is the ideal configuration. The overall feedback of this keyboard is amazing too. In fact, I managed a score of 72 words per minute on this keyboard, whereas even on my daily driver, my average score is 68. There is a lot to like about this laptop, but I mean it when I say that I could wholeheartedly recommend this just for the keyboard. Despite Despite all that love, there is one thing that I have slight minor issues with, which is the backlighting of the keyboard. Clearly, it isn't perky lighting and it shows. Half of the keys don't really light up, making it tough to actually find them in the dark. Then again, not a lot of OEMs offer a backlit keyboard in this price segment in the first place, so I won't make a big deal out of this. Speaking of the backlighting, there's one more thing that I wanted to highlight about. Most of the Ultrabooks these days come with a power saving feature where if you leave the keyboard idle for 15 seconds, the backlight would just turn off. That is not the case with the VivoBook X403 you could leave it idle for as long as you like and the backlight would not turn off, which is something I greatly appreciate. I have never liked the touchpad on Asus devices, 
simply because of how inconsistent they are. The touchpad on the X403, at least on my review unit, does manage to perform quite well. While I do wish that it was a bit bigger in size, the overall experience has been quite decent. It comes with Windows Precision drivers, so all your gestures work just fine. Add to that the fact that there is also a fingerprint scanner in the top right corner, which works just as you would expect it to, thanks to Windows Hello. To be fair, yes, the touchpad here is absolutely great. However, judging by my past experiences with Asus, take me a little bit more time to actually convince me to recommend the touchpad on an Asus device in general. Okay, so far things have been pretty good about this laptop, but this is one segment where things just come crashing down. The audio here is pretty bad. There is no bass, there is no clarity, there's no vocals, and the overall output is just too damn low. Considering that the speakers are at the bottom, that is definitely something to be expected. There isn't a lot to talk about here. The audio on this laptop is pretty bad, period. But you know what's great? The performance. So I have with me the i5 variant configured with 8 gigs of RAM and 512 GB of PCIe SSD. The quad core chipset shows its worth and the 8 gigs of RAM proved to be quite enough for my usual workload. Even after having 20 Chrome tabs open and Spotify playing in the background, the laptop was still able to load Photoshop quite easily. Yes, it isn't built for gaming, but I did play a couple of sessions of PUBG Lite on this and that worked just fine. Opening the laptop isn't a tedious task. You just unscrew the little screws at the bottom and pop off the lid. Inside, you'll see that the system is cooled by a single fan, which is kind of the obvious choice for this design. Thankfully, thermals were never an issue for me. Even under heavy workloads, the laptop stayed under the 55 degree mark, which is absolutely great especially for an ultrabook. In terms of upgradability, the RAM is soldered on, so you cannot upgrade that. That said, both the SSD and the Wi-Fi card can be upgraded. However, I don't really see a need for either of those changes. Okay, now this is one thing that absolutely blew away my mind. So Asus claims that the laptop should last a full day of charge, that is 24 hours. And when that laptop came in and we read the press release and I read that 24 hour mark, me and Arshad were just laughing about it. That is when the laptop arrived. Two days after using this thing, my opinion just changed. Now, I'm not saying that the laptop did last 24 hours for me, but this thing is a battery champ. It managed to give me a little over 13 hours while the system was put on high performance mode and I was constantly connected to the internet while writing my articles, listening to Spotify and playing a game or two of PUBG Lite. The laptop easily lasts a full day of work without the need of charging in between. In fact, I reckon you can actually make the device last for over 18 hours if you just balance between the right profiles. That is absolutely stunning. So, is the Asus VivoBook X403 worth it? Absolutely. I mean, obviously there are clear signs of cost cutting here and there, especially if you compare it next to a ZenBook, but those are minor trade-offs that everyone should be willing to trade off for, especially if you consider the 50,000 price tag. I'm not saying that the VivoBook X403 is the perfect ultrabook, but it is definitely the perfect ultrabook at this price tag. Well, that was my review of the VivoBook X403. Hit the like button if you like this review and make sure to comment below if you would like to see more reviews of this. That's me signing off and I'll see you in the next one.